Hey y'all, in today's video, we're gonna cover one of the laboratory techniques that is gonna be the bane of your existence throughout this entire year, significant figures, colloquially known as sig figs. We're gonna look at them and we're also gonna learn a little bit about how to take measurements analog style here in AP Chemistry. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's start with the basics. Significant figures for as much of a pain as they are, are actually quite valuable or, you know, significant. The idea of significant figures is they tell us the precision with which a measurement was originally made, and it makes sure that we're not reporting a result with greater precision than we measured it. For instance, if I am measuring something by the length of my feet, I can't then try to say, well, that's exactly this number of millimeters. I don't know the precision to millimeters. I know the precision to how many feet there are. Okay, so be careful when it comes to taking measurements and don't sleep on the fact that significant figures do have a value to them. They're just going to become annoying from time to time, but it's a great habit to get into. And it's one that I'm going to focus on throughout the year as well, because it is important to be able to do things the right way. So if we're actually looking at a number. Significant figures are actual valuable numbers within a measured number. So when we look at a sig fig, we have to look at numbers in the whole value. These are gonna include numbers at the front, numbers in the back, and numbers in the middle, okay? Let's talk about how to determine which values are in fact significant within any number. The first thing to understand is that any number that's not a zero is 100% guaranteed to be significant. So if we look at the number 52.3, it has three non-zero values. That's three significant figures. The other thing to keep in mind is that any zero that falls between two non-zero numbers is significant. So 102.4, that zero in the middle counts. So 102.4 has four significant figures. Any zeros to the left of a number that have a decimal point or not are not considered significant. So if I look at this number, 0 0.032, it has two significant figures because the zeros at the front are not considered significant. That being said, zeros to the right, when there's a decimal point present, are significant. So 2.00 has three significant figures because those zeros at the end are significant. But that's only if there's a decimal point present. Because 4,200 without a decimal point, those two trailing zeros, they're not significant. 4,200 only has two sig figs. So you might be sitting here and saying, whoa, way too many rules. I don't get it. I don't know what's going on. Let me give you a trick. It is called the Atlantic Pacific Rule. The Atlantic Ocean, if you're looking at a map, of the United States is on the right side of the United States. Meanwhile, the Pacific Ocean, if you look at a map of the United States, is on the left side, the left coast. If a decimal point is present, like the Pacific, you're gonna start on the Pacific side, the left side, and you're gonna eliminate any zeros that you see from the farthest left all the way up to the first non-zero number. At that point, any number from that point to the right is significant. Let me repeat that. With the Pacific side, if the decimal point is present, you start on the left side, you eliminate all zeros up until the first non-zero number, and then any number, including that one to its right, is gonna be significant. Now, if a decimal point is absent, you're gonna start on the Atlantic side, eliminating all zeros on the right, all right? You're gonna eliminate all zeros on the right. You're gonna stop at the first non-zero number. And once you get that non-zero number, anything to its left is now going to be considered significant. So let's do a few examples here. So going back, 52.3, three sig figs, decimal point is present. So we start on the Pacific side. There are no zeros to eliminate. So all three, all three numbers here are considered significant. 102.4. Point four. Again, decimal point present. We start on the Pacific side. No, non, no zeros to eliminate. So all values are significant in this case. 0 0.032, decimal point present. 
We start on the Pacific side and we see two zeros. We can eliminate both of those zeros. They're not significant. So the three is our first non-zero value. And then anything to its right will be significant. That means two significant values. 2.00, decimal point present. We start on the Pacific side. All right, so we start on the Pacific side. We are gonna see no zeros. So we start with a two and anything to its right is significant. So both the two and both zeros are significant. Three sig figs. But 4,200, no decimal point present. It is absent. So we start on the Atlantic side. We eliminate those two zeros. And now we know we have two significant figures remaining, the four and the two. A couple of rules when it comes to mathematical functions with sig figs. And this is going to be a little tricky, but don't worry. There's some practice for you on the math worksheet, the math packet that I've given you for your summer work. When you are multiplying and dividing with sig figs, you're going to find the number within the function that you're using that has the fewest number of significant figures, and that's the number of sig figures you're reporting in the answer. So if you look at this example, 1.222 times 1.22 is going to result in a number, your final answer, reported to three sig figs, because 1.22 has three sig figs, whereas 1.222 has four sig figs. So our answer 1.49 has three sig figs because we're looking to the function and saying, okay, within the function, what was our fewest number of sig figs? That's any multiplication or division process. When it comes to addition and subtraction, it's actually much easier. You're finding the number that has the fewest number of decimal points. Adding and subtracting, you're going with based on decimal points. So if I take 1.222 and add it to 1.22, our answer is going to be reported with two decimal points because 1.22 has two decimal places. So our answer in this case is 2.44, which is three total sig figs. But again, we care mostly about the number of decimal points there. When we're taking analog measurements, there's one trick you have got to know. So I'm going to talk a little bit about taking measurements with volumes and taking measurements with lengths. This only applies to analog. We're not going to worry about this with digital. So if you have a digital thermometer, you're not doing this. If you have a digital scale or balance, you're not doing this. This is only analog. When you're measuring a volume, we always measure to the bottom of the meniscus. Now, the meniscus is the curvature of the liquid in the cylinder. So when we look at a graduated cylinder, all of the liquid is going to curve. We measure from the very bottom of that curve. The bottom of that curve, we're going to look at the lines on that cylinder. The way we do this is we measure exactly the number that we can read, and then we estimate one decimal beyond what we can measure. So if we look at the first graduated cylinder here on the left, you'll notice that you can see the line at the bottom of the meniscus is at 43, and that's on the dot, like it's 43. So it's 40, we see 40, and we count up one, two, three lines, and we can see that the line is right on 43 but we can't just say 43. Instead, we have to say 43.0 because that 0, 0.0 tells us something. It's the significant figure. It's the last significant figure. It's an estimated value. Now, are we pretty confident? Sure, but you can be off on that estimated value by plus or minus a little bit and still be fine. So if we look at the burette next door, be aware that burettes are measured from top to bottom, not from bottom to top. So when we look at this one, we can measure it at 28 point, let's call it 28.9. But maybe you think it's a little bit above that line, which maybe you would then say it's 28.89 or 28.88. If you think it's dead on the line, then you would say it's 28.90. Either way, you're using that last decimal place to give you a conveyance of uncertainty. So you would say it's 28.89 plus or minus 0.01. That 0.01 plus or minus tells you that, well, I'm estimating that last decimal. You must always estimate one decimal point beyond what you can actively read, all right, the scale of the measuring device in order to convey the proper measurement, all right? That is a testable and required component of this process. Finally, if we look at a ruler, such as the one on top, you can see that the measurement here is going to be 17.5-ish. I need to estimate one decimal beyond that. So maybe you say it's 17.50. Maybe you say it's 17.52. All 
all right? But in the end, you have to estimate, again, one decimal point beyond what you can read, and we can read 17.5, which means we have to estimate one decimal point beyond that. So that wraps up today's video. It was very technical in the sense that we were learning how to utilize significant figures and take measurements both in volume and also analog uh, distance measurements. Remember, significant figures are significant in AP chemistry. We need to make sure we know how to do them because you will be expected to report your answers in the appropriate number of sig figs this year. When we're doing sig figs, the quick way of remembering is the Atlantic Pacific rule. And when we're taking measurements, remember you always estimate one decimal point beyond what you can actively see, the scale of the measuring device. And if you're measuring with a volume cylinder, like a burette or a graduated cylinder, you always read to the bottom of the meniscus. The other thing we talked about was in sig figs, when you're using them mathematically, we always have to make sure we know whether we're doing addition and subtraction or multiplication and division because you handle sig figs differently. Multiplication and division, you're going with the fewest number of sig figs in the function. Addition and subtraction, you're going with the measurement with the fewest number of decimal points in the function. Today's video was written, produced, filmed, and edited by Dawson Rose and Jack Schuler. Thank you all for watching it. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.